Yeah. Good evening, respected professor and my dear students. I welcome you again for another session of DNB Raisa online activities today. Today we have discussion on theory questions. To start with, I invite Dr. Muthumani to take over the session. Over to Dr. Muthumani. Sir, good evening, sir. Ah, good evening, Muthumani. Go ahead. Sir, uh, I am going to present about biological signals and describing various methods of measuring brain signals. Sir, am I on? Yeah, but voice is uh, breaking. Audio. Uh, we audio when you check funding now. Why is when you break our model? Sir, am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, biological signals. Biological signals are electrical or magnetic signals generated by the biological activity within the human body. They can be monitored directly using electrodes or can be reproduced via a system incorporating a transducers. The signals are amplified, manipulated, processed, and then usually analyzed by a computer. The end product is the biological signal which is converted into a readable form. Some of the biological signals which measured commonly are electrocardiography, electromyography, electroencephalography, and invasive blood pressure measurements. Audio, 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 not, not graphy. Sir, sorry, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah. Now, audio was breaking a little bit in between. Sir, elect electromyography. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Yes. Electromyography is used to measure spontaneous or evoked potential from muscles. And principle of electromyography used for monitoring neuromuscular blocking agents. A nerve stimulator used to apply a supramaximal current to a nerve to produce depolarization. The muscle response is commonly detected visually, but it can be detected electrically and more accurately by electromyography. It is also used for nerve conduction studies to diagnose myopathic and neuropathic disorders. In Electroencephalography, which measures the electrical activity of the brain using skin electrodes. The electroencephalography detects the sum of postsynaptic potential which arises from the pyramidal cells in the cerebral cortex in response to the rhythmic discharge from the thalamic cells. Electroencephalography has a number of clinical applications and is useful in ICU to diagnose seizure activity, particularly like non convulsive status epilepticus. Anesthetic drugs, which affects the EEG, by if the level of anesthesia increases, the frequency of EEG waveform decreases, and if smaller doses of anesthesia, which results in increased frequency and activity. At very high doses, the frequencies are very low. The frequencies are often divided into several bands, which are delta, delta band, which is less than 4 hertz, theta band, which is 4 to 7 hertz, alpha band, which is 8. To 13 hertz, beta which is 13 to 5. Methods of measuring brain signals. Brain electrical activity monitoring by is by electroencephalography, bispectral index, narco trend, snap index, patient stable analyzer, signal uh, function monitoring, number spectral analysis. And evoked potential monitoring by motor evoked potential, somatosensory evoked potential, auditory and visual evoked potential. Uh, first, we will see about bispectral index. It is used to measure the level of consciousness by algorithmic analysis of patient EEG during general anesthesia. And indications for bispectral index are uh, procedures uh, done by total intravenous anesthesia, low flow anesthesia, and induced hypotension and rapid sequence induction. And it also used for cardiac surgeries, neurosurgeries, obstructive surgeries and previous surgeries with history of awareness under general anesthesia. And interpreted, interpretations of bispectral index are 0 to 100 and 0 which is cortical electrical silence, 0 to 40 which is increasing increased incidence of burst suppression 
40 to 60 surgical anesthesia with decreased probability of post operative recall 60 to 85 increased sedation but rouseable in response to stimulation and 85 to 100 uh, awake aware and able sense of bifectal index monitor sedation hypnosis optimal titration of anesthetic drugs predicts level of sedation in icu and monitors awareness and recall during general anesthesia uh, entropy entropy is designed to aid the management of general anesthesia in patients by measuring irregularity in spontaneous brain and facial muscular activity it uses a proprietary algorithm to process electroencephalography electro -encephalography and frontal electromyographic data to produce two values which indicates the depth of anesthesia uh, the two values are state entropy and response entropy state entropy is a stable parameter electromyography signal used for the and sedative effect of anesthetic agents on brain which ranges from 0 to 100 and response entropy which is a fast reacting parameter based on electroencephalography and frontal electromyographic signals which provides an indication indication of the patient's response to external stimuli and signal awakening ranges from 0 to 91 interpretation of entropy highly irregular signals with wavelength and amplitude vary over time produces high values of entropy and indicating that the patient is awake whereas regular signals with constant wavelength and amplitude over time produces zero or low entropy values indicating a lowest probability of recall and suppression of brain electrical activity target range for entropy value ranges from 40 to 60 state entropy and response entropy values near 40 indicates low lowest probability of awareness Increase, increasing electromyographic activity indicates impending arousal. If state entropy is low and response entropy is high, cons consider about further administration of analgesia and further administration of muscle relaxant. Brain and facial muscular activity is recorded via a disposable sensor with three electrodes that are attached to the patient's forehead and the sensor cable which connects sensor to the entropy module. The entropy module can produce continuous data which can be both stored and printed off and it's therefore compatible with electronic record keeping narco trend in narco trend multivariate statistical analysis method using proprietary pattern recognition algorithm which transforms eeg into six letter calculation of depth of anesthesia from a to f and stages of narco trend are a which is awake b sedated c lighter plane lighter plane of anesthesia d general anesthesia e deep hypnosis and general anesthesia and stage f which is general anesthesia plus burst suppression and somatosensory evoked potential it is a signal detectable in a electroencephalography which is generated in response to a similar applied to a peripheral sensory nerve like ulnar nerve, medial nerve, tibial nerve. These evoked potentials are recorded over the sensory cortex. These potentials reflect the integrity of sensory neural pathway from peripheral nerve to the somatosensory cortex, which is used to monitor the posterior segment of spinal cord and its uh, implications on anesthesia. Uh, the volatile in motor evoked potential which is generated in response to a stimulus applied over a, a motor cortex in a transcranial fashion and the potential is recorded at the level of muscles which reflects integrity of motor pathway from periphery to motor cortex which is used to uh, monitor the anterior segment of spinal cord uh, this motor evoked potential is extremely sensitive to volatile anesthetics so use only total intravenous anesthesia and not possible to monitor if significant neuromuscular blockade present uh, sir that's all <clears throat> what about the auditory evoke potential <clears throat> you are mainly may concentrating on motor evoke but don't you think auditory evoke potential uh, uh, assesses the brain function more than motor evoke potential <clears throat> Just like your uh, BIS entropy and narco trend, 
the next in line to assess the brain function comes the auditory evoke potential and there is a latest uh, inclusion in this what okay. is called patient state index have you heard of that have any one of the students heard about patient yes, state sir. index dr ramu are you there sir uh, no sir have you heard of that no sir okay okay that is a what is massimo technology have you heard the term massimo technology or massimo yes, sir MMA yes sir massimo to see the svv of svi of the patient sir massimo cd svi is systemic vascular systemic vascular resistance index sir to see the svi in the svi index or what what how was massimo introduced what is massimo massimo uh, non invasive technique to monitor the uh... oh is it the name of a person or or any it... technique or what is a company is uh... it's a company correct it's a name of the company okay so yes. they have included what is called digital extraction technology dt that is unwanted signals are removed and only the signals which you want to concentrate are being taken up and then processed and display is given it was first introduced in pulse oximetry where unnecessary signals were confusing the pulse oximetry readings so they wanted for example if the patient's finger is cold or if the vessels are in spasm all these things used to affect that so massimo technology or there is a movement the earlier pulse oximeter before massimo technology all these uh, things used to affect the readings displayed by the pulse oximeter so massimo introduced a technology where they removed or extracted the unwanted signals and then produced the real correct finding of the particular signal that you want to highlight and then transfer it into display form okay thank you so they okay. have come out with a newer method called patient state index so can i share the screen yes sp sp sir is it visible yes sir Okay. So Muthumani correctly started with the uh, definition for uh, biologically measurable signals or biological signals which are commonly measured. They are commonly the cardiovascular system. You measure the e ECG. The electrical activity of the heart is commonly measured. then with regard to the muscular system we measure the neuromuscular activity and in the central nervous system we commonly measure the brain potentials or brain activity in the form of electroencephalography and this is electroencephalography originally when it was introduced or even today as it is done involves the placement of a lot of leads how many leads you have to place if you want to do an eeg any idea any anybody who has worked in the neuro department how many electrodes have to be placed over the scalp for recording an electroencephalogram mutumani no, are you able yes, to hear me how many electrodes you have to play for ecg for electrocardiogram how many electrodes you place Hello. Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. For electrocardiogram, normally for ECG, every day you are putting it in the theater. Two. Isn't it? How many Twelve, electrodes sir. do you play? Twelve, Twelve sir. Twelve electrodes are you placing for ECG? Eight. Eight. How many leads you are recording? Seven. Nine. 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 But how many electrodes you are sticking to the patient's skin? 
nine. You can put three or you can put five. There are two options in the. If you see the ECG monitor, it will always say whether you want to do three electrode monitoring or five electrode monitoring. So you place only three or maximum five electrodes on the chest of the patient when you want to record the electrocardiogram. But for electroencephalogram, you have to place 19, one nine leads on the all over the scalp, frontal, parietal, temporal, occipital, like that. You have to put one nine, 19 leads all over the scalp. And that will be very cumbersome and the machine is also very huge. So what they did was to analyze the brain signals. They first reduced the number of leads to just three or four placed on the forehead and the temporal region. And then they had an analytical system called Fournier analysis, F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R, Fournier analysis system was introduced, which means you break down the complex electrical signals produced by the neuronal cells into simple sine waves and then start analyzing them. This is the basis of brain signal analysis. The Fournier analysis system, when it is introduced, that was the basis of all EEG signal analysis. So based on that, the, the first one to come up with was the bispectral index. Bispectral is itself an uh, analysis technology. It doesn't mean that you are, uh, pay, pay, by the means two spectral means spectrum, even though literally it means that it is a technique of analysis of the waveforms. So bispectral index was introduced. So knowing these basics, now we go to <coughs> the details. EEG reflects the combined synaptic activity of both excitatory and inhibitory postsynaptic potential generated by the cortical neurons. This is the definition of electroencephalogram. It reflects the combined synaptic activity of excitatory as well as inhibitory pathways. And uh, since 1937, anesthetists have been aware of this potential and the significance of EEG. However, the complex waves of pra EEG are not interrupted easily and several problems had the limitation. So that, for example, EEG does not change in a linear or monotonic fashion with changing anesthetic depth. Second thing, not all anesthetic agents produce similar EEG patterns. So these are the two stumbling blocks for using EEG as a regular monitor for a long time. Then complex EEG signals have been dissected to extract its core component with significant advance also made in interpretation of the information that it may contain. This is what I said, the complex waveforms were broken down into simple sine waveforms and then analyzed and processed. The increased speed, flexibility, economy of digital circuits, as well as advances in computer hardware and signal processing algorithms, these are the things which revolutionize the usage of EEG as a monitoring tool. Thus, methods have been developed to compress, simplify, and display various processed summaries of EEG data. That is how the brain signals were being utilized now. A major limitation to the study of the various algorithms of <coughs> depth of anesthesia monitors is that they are proprietary algorithms. That is, each company has got its own method of algorithm. So you can't uh, standardize that. Each one has got their, it's a secret patented property. So each one uh, analyze the EEG signals in their own way. Thus, it is often difficult to understand the mathematical process involved. So it is kept as a secret by the company, the trade secret. In 1994, Sig and Shamoon were the first to describe, who, to describe the BIS technology for brain monitoring. And their BIS system included a non-invasive adhesive sensor, which is attached to the forehead, a patient interface cable, a digital signal converter, 
a BIS engine or a microprocessor and a monitor. These were the components of the BIS system that they introduced in 1994. And BIS engine process processes the EEG data from a single channel EEG signal measured from the patient's forehead according to an algorithm that combines select EEG features to produce a single dimensionless number which is called the bit index number so there is no unit attached to this number so it starts from zero and goes up to 100 zero means no activity 100 means full activity so other eeg based technologies which were later developed are called e entropy narco trend and auditory evoke potentials these are the three things which mainly can the assess the brain activity. E-entropy was so uses a proprietary algorithm to map entropy, the theoretical assumption that any irregularity in the EEG signal decreases under anesthesia. This is the basis for entropy monitoring. The word entropy itself means detecting an irregularity. That is the meaning of the word entropy. <clears throat> so the EEG signals are not constant or the same. They have some irregularity on and off. This irregularity will be decreased or suppressed under anesthesia. So based on that only the entropy monitor works. And the degree of disorder or irregularity in EEG and the frontal electromyogram. When you apply the electrodes to the forehead, the frontal muscle frontalis muscle also act is activated and that also uh, produces signals so both the brain signals and the frontalis muscle signal they combine together and they are interpreted the data are converted into two values that indicate the depth of anesthesia the first value which is called the response entropy which is mainly because of the responsiveness to external stimuli and signals early awakening so response entropy is mostly because of this component, frontal electromyography. Whereas the second value, which is called the state slides, entropy. Slides. Hello? And sir, slides are not visible, sir. We are not able to see the slides, sir. We are having a different screen. Webex yeah. introduction screen is there. Huh? Huh? We are Webex not able to see your slides, sir. We are seeing only the Webex screen. We are not able to see your PPT screen, sir. Okay. Stop sharing and again go back. Is it visible now? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes sir. Visible, sir. Now we are seeing the PPT, sir. You are seeing mm -hmm. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it now visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Visible, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. visible okay. in full screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, this is what I want us telling. The EEG signals are broken down and then processed. And you get the dimensionless number in this index. Later on, entropy, narco trend, and AEP are introduced. And the entropy simply means that detecting an irregularity or irregularity in a system is called entropy. So the EEG signals are irregular. And this irregularity decreases under anesthesia. And the entropy, there are two types of entropy. One is called the response entropy, and the second is called the state entropy. And the response entropy is mainly produced by the frontal EMG and to some extent by the brain signals. Whereas the second value state entropy is a stable parameter that may be used to assess the hypnotic effects of anesthetic agents on the brain. I'll show you pictures later how you are going to use entropy monitoring and how the numbers will change. The clinical relevant target range for response entropy is 40 to 60. Almost even the BIST monitor also has a similar value. If it is a patient is under correct plane of anesthesia, you achieve a number between 40 and 60, then you presume that the patient is under surgical plane of anesthesia. When the number increases and comes towards 100, 
you presume or you make sure that the patient is waking up whereas the, the number goes down below 40 it indicates that the patient is going deeper and deeper and there is a depression and the narcotrend technology which is developed in the university of medical school germany analyzes raw eeg data using spectral analysis to produce a number of parameters and it is a multivariate statistical method it is not a single variation but multivariate statistical methods and is applied automatically and classified ecg signal on the basis of visual assessment of eeg and related to what is called lumi sleep classification system which was introduced in 1937 so using this they have instead of the numbers they have got alphabets where stage a means patient is fully awake and stage f is very deep hypnosis and stage e indicating the depth of anesthesia for surgery so this narco trend is a little different from the other things that you don't get a dimension as number but you get a display of the alphabets a means awake f means fully under in between e is the state of surgical anesthesia the nar narco trend offered includes a dimensional narcotic index also ranging from 100 to 0 so even though technically there are alphabetical grading for display they also have a number which is 0 to 100 just that is a common thing for all the brain uh, monitoring systems now coming to evoke potentials they measure the eeg response to repetitive auditory evoke potential stimuli or visual stimuli and measure the integrity of the neural pathway so the uh, evoke potentials are a little different from the bis and entropy and narco trend because they don't measure the automatic brain activity signal rather what they do is they stimulate the brain from a peripheral source or a periphery uh, uh, say periphery to central and then see the electrical activity to see how they are being responsive to the stimuli so the <clears throat> while the bis is an index of hypnosis evoke potential show responses to stimuli <laughs> so if a patient is under full plane of anesthesia like proper surgical plane of anesthesia he should not be responding to the stimuli that is the basis of evoke potential so you try to stimulate the brain and if the patient is in the correct plane of anesthesia there should not be any response on the contrary when the patient is waking up or getting into a lighter plane your stimuli should evoke the brain and then it should produce a response from the brain that is the basis of evoke potential so the auditory evoke potential monitoring technique isolates neurophysiological signal generated during stimulation of the cranial eighth cranial nerve using a repetitive auditory stimulus with bilateral clicks stimulus 70 decibels for two seconds and the duration delivered through headphones so signal is acquired using eeg electrodes which are placed not on the forehead but on the mastoid process midline and the ground electrode so there are also three electrodes needed for the auditory evoke potential one is placed on the mastoid the other is on the reference midline and there is a ground electrode Pardon? is it okay am i audible the patient's yes, audible, index, uh, is calculated audible, by high resolution four channel eeg monitor that collects information on frequency and face brain electrical activity according to anterior posterior relationship of the brain as well as the coherence between bilateral brain regions so this is the latest advancement in patient safe index what happens is there are four channels of eeg monitor which collect information from the anterior posterior as well as the bilateral brain regions so that is the so this is much more extensive collection of signals rather than the few electrodes placed only on the forehead 
the psi provides a continuous numerical value derived from systematic studies of complex changes in the brain state that were observed so reversibly accompany loss and return of consciousness independent of anesthetic class so this is another advantage of psi that whatever type of anesthetic you use whether it is intravenous or inhalation it is able to get all the signals and then process it depending upon the depression that is produced by the drug indeed the variable selected for incorporation of the psi displayed very significant heterogeneity at variance of different levels sedation hypnosis for sensitivity but non significant differences across anesthetic agent at specified level so it can be used specifically for a particular agent as well as the degree of sedation or hypnosis produced by that now this is the commonly used bis monitor you can see the forehead electrodes are placed here and there is a temporal sensor which is placed here and you are seeing the number 93 so what does it mean is the patient anesthetized or is still awake awake still awake so there is no tube no mask nothing so it has been applied in the conscious state and it is giving this reading and this is these are all the parts that are there the bispectral index sensor they are all placed on the forehead like this so you can see three sensors are placed and the fourth one coming to the temple area then you get the number display of the value then you get the eeg tracing also real time eeg tracing also is there and it has been processed and then you get the variations that is happening and there is a power button this is the interface cable these are all the parts of the bispectral index monitoring and this is the entropy monitor the placement of the sensors are almost like your this monitor for in entropy also so there is one two three electrodes which are placed and this is the common number response entropy and state entropy should be more or less in the same range if this is the value then that shows the anesthetized state proper surgical state of anesthesia so when you have an entropy monitor and you are using it you must try to achieve a value for both response entropy and state entropy in a very close range between 40 to 50 if you get both these numbers within this short difference range that means the patient is in the proper surgical plane of anesthesia and uh, some monitors will have both scores displayed separately so when the uh, number is almost 190 uh, between uh, 60 to 100 patient is awake between 40 to 60 low probability of recall clinical adequate levels of post surgical operations below 40 to 0 it indicates deep anesthesia or a totally suppressed eeg so just like your bis monitor the same values are there but there are two two displays response entropy is fast reacting parameter which may be used to detect the activation of facial muscles so this response entropy is a mainly signal from the frontalis and facial muscles so whenever a patient becomes lighter you know they usually try to wrinkle their forehead so the frontalis muscle acts so that is an indication that patient is getting awake whereas in state entropy it's a stable parameter which may be used to assess the hypnotic effect of the anesthetic drugs on the brain so it is actually the sg which detects the hypnotic state re detects the activity state so that that is why there are two things which are there response and state entropy and these are the frequency rate of the signals response entropy is 0.5 to 47 less than 47 whereas state 0.8 to less than 0.32 and display range for them 0 to 100 whereas state entropy is 0 to 91 and this is how you start placing the entropy <coughs> sensors and start measuring it as soon as you place the sensors on the patient's forehead 
the machine will uh, check whether you have placed them correctly and the first signal you get will be the three tick marks to show that all the three sensors have been placed correctly so sensor check passed will be the first signal then when the patient is awake you have a response entropy of 98 and a state entropy of 91 this is the fully awake patient state then when you start inducing them what happens there is a sudden drop in the value of both re and ac that is response entropy and state entropy the value starts suddenly decreasing which indicates that your induction agent is working whether it may be inhalational or it may be intravenous and once you achieve a steady state or come to the correct surgical plane of anesthesia the display should show a value of 40 to 50 for both sc and re then uh, if the plane of anesthesia is too deep then the number goes down to 14 and 13 that means uh, you are suppressing the brain too much and it is also exhibited at the stage by what is called the bsr can anyone guess what could be this expansion for bsr burst suppression ratio excellent burst suppression ratio of 37 percent okay so that is the thing to show so this will come into play only when you have a very deep plane of anesthesia so this will indicate that you are overdoing your uh, anesthetic agents and you can try to bring back the uh, lighten the plane of anesthesia and uh, finally when the patient becomes comes to the anesthetic recovery stage or uh, when the surgery is over and the patient has to get waken, woken up then you get the back to the old numbers of 99 and 87 so these are all the stages or steps in the monitoring of entropy right from sensor placement up to the recovery okay so this is how you go and read or interpret that now this is what is the auditory evoked potential so you can keep it like a small earphone or headphone then the uh, parameters are placed i mean the, the electrodes are placed here and the stimuli elect can be applied through the headphones or the earphones so both are applied like this and this is the pathway so from the ear where you want to stimulate the brain auditory evoked potentials you first give the stimulus from periphery the wave goes one and two to the medulla then to the pons then to the midbrain and then goes to the auditory cortex so all these uh, various waves are there one two three four and five waves are there and all of them are recorded here okay so this is the normal response how you stimulate and see and when you are passing a anesthetic you can again record all these things like this and then you can see where exactly the response is mid cortical or late cortical response and then once the patient goes under surgical plane of anesthesia these responses should be curtailed or it should be suppressed then you know that patient is under correct plane of anesthesia during recovery they should all come back when you apply the stimulus to the ear and then give the stimulation these waves should come back and that is the indication of a correct recovery and in fact the auditory signals will be the one which will be perceived first that is why we always call out the patient's name or talk to them to make sure whether they are awake fully okay so the auditory signals are evoked like that this is the patient state index uh, <coughs> monitor which i was telling about and you can see the sensors or electrodes are placed almost same like that and this will be the display that you will see a four channel bilateral EEG waveform will be there and the patient state index for a processed EEG parameter related to the effect of anesthetic agents is also shown here and there is a number display also 36, 36, all that and the uh, <coughs> density spectral algorithm array is also shown so the periodic EEG suppression also is shown by the black waves that are shown here so this will be the uh, display in the newer 
brain signal <coughs> monitor which is called the patient state index and this dsa contains left and right spectrograms representing the power of eeg on both sides of the brain and uh, so this is how the machine is being used in the ot you can see the mo uh, monitor is being displayed here and you have a uh, another module attached to that what is that so this will be the uh, this is you can see the massimo the and this is called send line, steady line sedition sedation line so steady line is the name of the machine or the instrument and these are all other parameters which are taken into account like your spo2 the pulse rate all these things are also taken into account to process the response in the brain and you have a display here and this is a newer module which is attached which can also quantify the blood supply to the brain so this also indicates one of the okay, things that happen during anesthesia so it can measure the quantum of blood supply also or taken into so you can replace this with the, this monitor if you want so this will be extra few lakhs if you want to add this to the so this is much more useful during neurosurgical procedures to assess the blood supply to the brain also okay mm. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank hey, you. Let's move on to the next topic, sir. Pardon? Any doubts from the students? <coughs> Dr. Krishnan, so this question is asked as uh, Muthumani said. First, you define what is uh, what are all the signals that can be biological signals that can be commonly measured, and then. The brain signals in detail how they are, uh, how EEG was first uh, plotted and then how it is broken down, analyzed, and how the uh, these signals uh, monitoring machines help in assessing the depth of anesthesia. So you can add all those things to that answer. Shall we just Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any topic? doubts from the students? Any questions from the students, please? Sir, may I use, uh, uh, I ask one doubt, sir? Uh, please, please, go ahead. <laughs> sir, so this is, these are the instruments basically used for uh, uh, assessing the level of anesthesia or any other purpose also, sir? No, mainly to prevent awareness. Because awareness, is, yes. you know, we are using multivariate technologies. We are using Kiva, we are using inhalation anesthesia. We are uh, producing muscle relaxation and then we are using uh, going in for some surgeries like uh, spinal surgery when we have to assess the integrity of the nervous system. So during all these times, the main aim of using this is to assess the depth of anesthesia to prevent awareness under general anesthesia because they have found that the incidence of awareness under general anesthesia has been quite alarming and it produces a very very difficult condition called post traumatic stress disorder after uh, if the patient remains awake and they don't uh, inform the physician that they were feeling or hearing whatever has been talking in the theater they go in for what is called the post traumatic stress disorder so we need to keep them completely unconscious during the surgical procedure and make them get awake only at the end of the surgery and if you produce adequate analgesia, if you provide adequate analgesia, then the patient will not remember anything what happened during surgery because of the usage of our benzodiazepines and other things which produce anti-grade amnesia also. So to avoid the intraoperative awareness is the main reason for which these uh, instruments were brought out, especially during cardiopulmonary bypass surgeries. Yes, when you uh, go in for uh, uh, circumventing the normal circulation. That is where patients mainly had this awareness problem and post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. So the usage of that uh, started only in uh, cardiopulmonary bypass surgery in the cardiac theaters, which has now come to be used as a regular monitor in all other major procedures also. 